Hey, hey, it's Lucas here. Welcome to my Gear Up video series where we are looking into sound improvements through the hardware. Today I'm here in my studio with the generic subwoofer that we are going to soon discuss closer. In this video we are going to unpack the box, then we discuss the, the subwoofer and its applications we find out the uh, best possible installation location and we connect the cable in. So let's roll up the sleeves and let's start unpacking. To break these metallic brackets here, my weapon of choice is the pair of quality pliers. So let's get into it. We simply remove these brackets one by one. And it should unfold pretty nicely. Let's remove the plastics. This. So there's a box inside the box. Let's proceed on opening the smaller box. After we open the box, there is Kitos thank you note. Kitos is a Finnish word, it means thank you. There's a poet by a famous Finnish poetist Eino Leino, also in English. Then we have the operating manual. Only a couple of sheets. European power cord. Great, it's the European model. And then we have some cat cabling. And there's the subwoofer itself. Let's reveal our star finally. Side, Doesn't she look pretty? And the build quality, it's it's built like a tank really. The front and rear sides, they are Thick MDF panels. And the, the reason for, for these interesting looks and cylindrical shape is the LSC laminar spiral enclosure, which is Genelec's proprietary technology for this kind of bass reflex cabinet design. The frequency response is between 22 Hz up to 160 Hz and the maximum sound pressure level is 104 dB. For the connections we have a full set of analog XLR type of connections. Then we have the digital in and out pair of connections accepting AES EBU type of signal and finally we have the GLM network connections that allows us to link this subwoofer to an existing SAM speakers. This baby is intended to be used with the Genelec SAM monitors A320 and A330 to extend their low frequency monitoring in the stereo and multi channel setups. But thanks to the, the extensive set of connectors we just saw, this subwoofer is, is equally well suitable for generic bass applications. Next we need to find the place where we install the subwoofer. So let's look at the operating manual, what it says about the installation. 
especially at low frequencies, the effect of the room is, is strong and it affects directly the response response and also the phase between the main monitors and the subwoofer. Also, if you place the subwoofer near the wall, we get more boost, which is the case at the corners as, as well. So according to the operating manual, the best place for the subwoofer placement would be slightly off the central line of the room. So let's start with that. Here I have placed the subwoofer slightly off the room center line and also I have made sure that there is not excess distance between the subwoofer and the wall. The, the maximum distance between the driver and the wall should not exceed 60 centimeters, which equals 25 inches. I have also ensured that there is no thick carpet under the subwoofer that could block the ventilation. Next, for the connections, we are going to need this cat cable and the power cord. And additionally, for my setup, we are going to need one XLR cable. This is for transmitting audio signals in digital form. This is my audio interface and behind the box there's plenty of connections. There's digital connection out where the signal goes to the left speaker right here. Behind this left speaker we can see this, this cable where the digital audio signal enters, enters the speaker. The next cable is the one where the digital signal comes out of the speaker and then it goes to the right speaker and enters the right speaker right here. The beauty of the digital signal path is, is that the sound quality is kept on the pristine level, but in addition to that, this digital signal path allows daisy chaining of multiple speakers. So we don't need to have individual cables carrying individual signals to each speaker. Instead, we can use one cabling going from one speaker to the next speaker to the next speaker. So now I'm going to plug this cable in. Should go here like this and the other end goes to the subwoofer. And here's the connectors for, for the digital signal. So let's plug this other end to the in connector like that. Next we connect the GLM cables. Since I already have the two main monitors connected to the GLM adapter, we only need to add the subwoofer in the existing two monitors chain by one CAT cable. Here on the GLM network connector, like that. There's one free slot behind the, the speaker where we attach this cord. This was the first part of the subwoofer installation series. In this first part, we unpacked the subwoofer, we placed it on the, on the floor, and we did the audio cabling and control network cabling. In the second part, the next part that is, we are going to add the subwoofer in the speaker configuration with the generic loudspeaker manager software and we will do some measuring and acoustic calibrations with this, this microphone. And finally we will do some testing. So, see you next time and thanks for watching, bye!